In this video, we're going to look at calculating the resultant force of two individual forces. Um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One is to break down each individual force into horizontal and vertical components. But in this video, I'm going to use a different method, which is to use vector triangles. Um, and this works whenever we need to find the resultant of two forces. And the way we do this is we draw the two forces top to tail. So we have this 70 Newton force acting here across, and we have a 40 Newton force. We're going to join it on the end. Uh, we have this 40 Newton force. And the resultant force is the sort of sum of these two forces. Uh, we're going to label this as F. And this is a vector triangle. Now, let's label some angles. So we know this angle is 30 degrees. Uh, which means that this angle here is 150 degrees. Now, the first question to find out the magnitude of the resultant force, well, we can use this using by the cosine rule. So remember, cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So in our example, the we want to find the resultant, which is F. Well, F squared is equal to 40 squared plus 70 squared minus 2 times 40 times 70 times cos 150. If you're not familiar with the cosine rule, you'll have to revise that. But that's the idea. And if we do this long calculation, we get that F squared is... 2 times 40 times 70 times cos 150 is 11349.74 and that means F is the square root of that which is 106.554 newtons. I've done that to two decimal places. And that is the magnitude of the resultant. That's part A. For so part B, again, we can use the uh, vector triangle that we drew. We're, we're looking for the angle between the resultant force and the 70 Newton force. Well, that's this angle here that I just labeled on the diagram as theta. So we need to work out what theta is. Um, so again, you could use the cosine rule here, or you could use the sine rule. Um, let's just We've done the cosine rule once already, so let's do the sine rule. The sine rule says that sine theta over the side opposite theta, which is 40, is equal to, um, let's see, we know that we've got sine 150 over the side that's opposite. Well, opposite 150 is this F 106.54. Okay, and just rearranging this, we get, we get that sine theta is 40 times sine 150 over 106.54. So let's just plug those numbers into my calculator. I get 0.1877. That's what sine theta is. So theta is the inverse sine of 0.1877, which is 10.82 degrees, again, to two decimal places. Okay. And that's, that's how you do that. 